Test mode five acres of alfalfa and we're kind of running into a problem on this tractor. On the way to the field this morning, I was going down the road and all of a sudden my wheels just started going like this. And I knew that this front end was loose. I knew that the a lot of stuff in there is kind of getting wore out, but I had never had it wobble on me as bad as it did going down the road. So on the way home, I was in fourth gear with the TA back. Like I was, I was creeping because if I went too fast, this thing would, you know, get out of whack. So we need to do a complete overhaul up here. There is an overall kit they sell. I went online. There's two kits you can get. There's a kit for all the stuff here. It's about 400 some bucks. And then there's a full front end kit, which includes the steering arms and the spindles as well. Um, that one's around 900 bucks and the other one's 400 bucks. So um, we're probably gonna just do the 400 buck one because I'm pretty sure my steering arms and spindles are good. Um, but there's some pins and a lot of, just, just a lot of slop in here. Anyway, we're gonna get that ordered here today or sometime soon. But yeah, it's frustrating going down the road and it starts wobbling. And honestly, I don't really think it's that safe. You know, you get a lot of wobble in that. You're gonna wear your tires out faster. You're probably gonna wear bearings out faster. Um, and I don't want anything falling off as I go down the road because that would just not be good. The case here is a very similar issue where these tires wobble a lot, but it's only because of this right here. This tie rod in here is wore out. I tried to replace it by taking the bolts out and pull it off, but this whole thing is just seized and I honestly probably need a new one. But it's a lot simpler steering mechanism and it wobbles just because it's kind of, um, there's not enough tightness in here. So we actually um, stuff pieces of metal down in there every now and again to try to keep it tight also pretty sure the rear main seal on this tractor is going out and leaking right there and dripping there and it's also leaking right here um, hydraulic fluid right there i don't think we'll have any problems with it if we keep running it through the rest of the season but that should be split at some point over the winter or sometime relatively soon and that front end needs rebuilt shoot I made a mess again. Here's the hay we're bailing, and it 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 seems wet. It's wet. Yep. That is some damp stuff right there. This is just a custom job that I'm doing, so I'm not bailing it for myself. Guy raked it this morning. We didn't ted it out. Well, we had pretty good drying weather, but it was a thick crop and it's alfalfa and it's tough to dry. So we gotta give it as long as we can to dry here, but we do have a good chance of rain coming tonight around four or five o'clock. So we're kind of pushing a little bit. Well, it wouldn't be a day of small bailing without some knotter issues. So we got a different problem this time. Today, we tied a bunch of knots around the bill hook down in there. You can see there's a whole bunch of knots tied around it. I had this happen last year twice. It's the first time it's happened this year. Really, all I gotta do is I got to cut all that twine off and I gotta reset all the twine. Again, I just did that last week, but I gotta do it again. I also cut my finger on the twine knife, so that hurts, but um, I don't really know what causes it to do this. What I do know is that normally it happens when I'm feeding it fast and a lot of hay is moving through and it's tying a lot of knots. But I've definitely fed it faster this year than I have today. So I don't know why it's just happening now, but it's happening. Hopefully we can re recycle the knotter and um, we'll be able to finish the last windrow. This wagon's being sold out of the field. But I only need to put a few more bales on it and then I'm just gonna bale that windrow onto the ground. We're almost done here. We just gotta get this fixed. I may be able to get away without recycling the knotter because I still got twine in my twine disc. I'm gonna try it here. I'm gonna put our pin in and fire it up and get rolling. You gotta take a look at this hay though. Holy crap. That ain't pretty alfalfa. Are we tying? Yep, we're tying. Simple as that. Don't know what causes it. Don't ask me, but we're working. That's it for this alfalfa. There is a very long line of bales that need to be picked up. Unfortunately, I don't have to do that today. 
but this is some purdy hay and it's running around 15 to 20 percent so whoever gets it should be happy with it clean out some of these fines Ever since we bailed this hay behind me, I've been keeping an eye on it with our probe here. Been checking moisture and temperature for the last couple days. I've even pulled these three out away from the stack because they were getting warm and I just wanted to put some space in between them. These were bailed around 30%, but when I was checking the moisture yesterday, they were saying 45. We'll check them here again. Probably gonna be 45 because, yep, there we go. 45 plus is basically what that means because it maxes out at 45. There was even a spot on this bale right here. You can see where it's really discolored. For the last three days since we bailed it, this was literally leaking juices and was wet. Like, I don't, it, yeah, must have had a really wet spot here. And it was so wet that you could see it dripping and I could feel it and it was hot. So that's what really prompted me to move those bales back uh, because I was just concerned about how hot that particular bale was getting. And then I've been leaving the doors open here. Normally I shut the doors every day, but I've been leaving them open overnight just because I want to keep some air moving through here and that sort of thing. Another thing this probe does is check the temperature. So I just stuck this one in the bale here. I'm just letting it sit in here and get a, a heat reading right now. It's at 90 degrees. Normally when I check heat and temperature, I want it to be the ambient air temperature roughly or, you know, within kind of a, a specific range. So if I were to go and check some of these bales over here, they would probably test around 75 to 80 because that's about the air temperature right now. But this bale here right now is testing 90. So it's, it's not too far off. I don't think this was one of the really bad wet ones, but it is a little bit warm in there. Now all hay heats and sweats, even if it's relatively drier hay, even if it was like 15 or you know 20% hay, it would kind of heat and sweat a little bit. Um, but eventually after the curing process, once it, you know, finishes sweating and stuff, that heat will come back down. So there's just this period where I need to test this hay and make sure that it's not going to burn my barn down. If y'all are interested in this probe here, I'll put an Amazon link down below. They're about 300 bucks, which is a little bit pricey. I wish they were cheaper, but that thing's really nice to test and probe bales. They also make one that you can put in the bale chamber. I'll put that one in the description as well. The thing is with that one is I can only see the temperature that I'm bailing currently. I can't like come back here and probe these bales later. So honestly, I'd like to have both because it'd be nice to have a monitor in the tractor when I'm bailing. I can watch it and be like, oh yeah, we can't bail this too wet. Um, and then I don't have to jump out and probe bales, but it's nice to have that probe one because then I can come up here like, hey, these bales are heating. Let me test them real quick. So yeah. I need to wash this thing off. It's getting filthy. Trying to take the slop out of this hitch here. I just put two big washers in here because this whole thing was slopping back and forth. It's also moving a lot right there, so not quite gonna work. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 